What I want to talk about today is preservation techniques. <laughs> Non-traditional preservation techniques because I've never heard of this before. So whenever we think about preserving animals, we think we think about smoking, dehydrating, making jerky, making pemmican of, of medium to large size game animals, fish even. But what we fail to consider and neglect even is the fact that uh, there is abundance of rodents, rats, mice, squirrels and things like that that we can also utilize in a long term strategy. So what I want to try to do today is make the first ever that I can determine mouse pemmican. I'll just quickly show you the ingredients that I've got for this bone in mouse pemmican that I've got in mind. Very very simple and micro preservation at its best. So I've just got the one mouse here and then I've got to add to him some choke cherries. What I plan on doing is just processing this stuff down, mashing it all up and then smoking it for, for a good length of time until it's nice and nice and brittle, dry, dehydrated and preserved. there's not a lot of meat left on a mouse. I've, I've kept everything I could intact. The head is still there, the eyes are there, the brain is there. I can use all of that in my pemmican. The only thing I've taken out are the limbs of the arms, the tail, and the entrails because I couldn't get the hair off the limbs basically so I took them off. Uh, but these these entrails and this, this fur I can use in my other traps. I can use them to bait coyotes, badgers, skunks, things like that. So that's good stuff. I'm going to hold on to it. Even though there's not a lot of meat on this little guy, if I have 10 or 20 or 30 of these you know, extra sitting around and I've already met my calorie needs, I can throw them into a pemmican and you probably have a really, really good portion of pemmican to draw on down the line. You can see that he's crushed up pretty good. Okay, his eye is still right there. Uh, but I can't feel any of those little bones in there. So it's well worth including those bones in your pemmican. Why not, right? Just extra calories, They're full of bone marrow. There's my mixture right there, my mouse and my crushed berries. So I'll just mix those guys in really good now. There is my uh, bone-in mouse pemmican mixture right there. As you can see, I left all the pits in the, uh, the choke chairs, not a big deal. Um, when I cook them, I'll be able to eat them. So I'm going to go ahead and get my fire set up, get my smoke stand set up, and start smoking this thing. Here's the cooking setup that I'm going to go with here. Like everything I do is super simple. So basically, 
my pemmican mixture, which is like glue on there right now on that rock, will just go down on top of these two crossbars like that. Okay, and then I'll use this blanket right here just to cover up the entire the entire thing, uh, just to contain the smoke when I start my fire. So it'll look something like that. And there it is, that's the setup I want. I'm getting plenty of smoke on that pemmican. Uh, I don't think it'll take all that long to cook, maybe 46 hours. I'll keep a watch on it, keep watching the consistency. But it's such a thin, thin spread that uh, it should smoke fairly fast. Yeah, check on the consistency of the actual uh, pemmican mixture. It stopped dripping about an hour ago. It's been on there for two hours now, so it is starting to dry out. So it is starting to dry out around the edges, as you can see. It's still soft in the middle though, but like I said, it's not dripping anymore. So I'll put it on for a couple more hours here, and then uh, see how it looks. Well, it's been on there for, for four hours now. I checked the consistency. It's dried, dehydrated out, so I think we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off right now, uh, and we will give it a test try. So, actually the rock broke, see that? But it's fairly good consistency, I'm happy with that. Okay, let's try this bone and mouse pemmican of mine. So that's the consistency you're looking at. You can still see the redness from the berries, but it's it's bone dry. Actually, it's pretty good. It tastes like burnt cherries. That's it. I think if I was to do, to do it next time, again, I take those pits out because they're they're pretty hard. They're eat, I mean, you can eat them, but they're definitely hurt on the teeth. And I'd, I'd also increase the rodent mixture, so I'd add about 50-50 mix of rodent to cherries, just to beef it up a little bit more. But that was a good experiment. My first mouse rodent pemmican, bone-in rodent pemmican. And full, dis full disclosure, I know it's not real pemmican, there's no suet, there's no fat in it, but it still is preserved um, rodent protein and fruit that you can take into the winter time and 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 uh, and use in lean time. So it may not be real pemmican technically, but the same principles, the same idea applies. It's still preserved food that you can use in lean times. So I'm really happy with the way that turned out. That's pretty good.